Hi, welcome to Painter Paint. My name is Ross, and today we are drawing an arm. In this video, we'll walk through one approach to drawing arms. The steps we'll use in this demonstration will include using basic shapes and forms to set up the drawing, mapping the anatomical structures with some guides, mapping the shadows, drawing the contours to illustrate the arm, and some simple shading. All right, let's go ahead and draw an arm. Okay, to start this drawing, I'm drawing three basic shapes. I'm simplifying the upper arm, lower arm, and hand into three rectangles. Now the reason I'm doing this is to establish where I'm drawing the arm on my paper, to set up the size or scale of the drawing on the paper, and work out the general proportions of the three big parts of the arm, the hand, the upper arm, and the lower arm. Now I can draw the simple forms to help me work out the general mass and perspective of each part of the arm. In this case, I'm using two cylinders to represent the upper arm and lower arm, and I'm leaving the hand alone for just a bit just in case I want to make an adjustment to the position of the hand later on. Next, I want to map out the anatomical structures. I want to look for both the skeletal and muscular structures here. For this arm drawing, the two important skeletal structures are the elbow and the wrist bone. The rest of what I am mapping here is where the muscles belong. To do this, I'm just loosely drawing ellipses to remind me of the general location of where those muscles will go later on in the drawing. I draw these ellipses just to set up a rough approximation of where the muscles will go and what size they will be at this point. All right, so after I've placed everything, if I'm happy with the overall size, proportions, and positioning of the parts, I'm now ready to begin working on the forms of the arms. I like to work out the structures as simple as possible at first. Now, I actually like to work with straight lines as much as possible at this stage, as this allows me to work out how all those elements come together before I worry too much about the curves or the undulations of the contours of the forms of the arm. Now, I know that not everyone will like to do it this way, I just like this method as it allows me to again simplify what I'm working on at each moment during the drawing process. This allows me to work on as few problems or drawing concerns at one time, which makes drawing less frustrating and much more enjoyable. Drawing with straight lines helps me see the connections and intersections of the parts of the arm by helping me see how those parts line up through the angles of those straight lines as they intersect and cross each other. I want to draw the lines that set up both the silhouette of the arm as well as the lines that set up the shapes and forms across the surface of the arm. Now that I have the arm structure drawn and mostly resolved, I'm ready to work on the hand. I'm going to go back to a step we used for drawing the arm, and that is I'm going to draw the hand using just basic shape. This again allows me to work on getting the proportions and positioning of all the parts of the hand correct before working out the contours for each surface. The hand can be a bit of a challenge to draw. Simplifying the elements and then separating them into separate steps again helps us. For example, positioning the fingers can be a bit of a struggle. To solve this, I'm simplifying the fingers into the least amount of visual information I can just to place them in the right spot. So here I'm just drawing a circle to represent the base knuckle and a line to represent each segment of the finger. And by doing this, I can reposition the fingers quickly. So if I drew a line in the wrong spot, I can make a correction without having to redraw a lot of the other lines. Once I have the fingers positioned using these simple guidelines, I can draw the fingers as basic shapes. Now because each segment of the finger is pointing in a slightly different direction, I'm going to draw each segment as a closed distinct shape. Again, working out both the size and position of each part of each individual finger. If I get these basic shapes sized right and located well in relationship to the other parts, it's going to be a lot easier to draw the contours of the fingers later on. Alright, so here I'm working on some of the contours of the shoulder and the upper arm. Really, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I have to say I'm always tempted to draw those contours at different stages of the drawing as they help the drawing look complete, but I need to be careful not to get ahead of myself, so I'm going to stop working on the contours right now and go back to working on drawing some of the structure. At this next stage, I'm doing two things. First, I'm mapping a boundary line establishing the edge between the light side and shadow side of the arm, and second, I'm drawing the smaller elements of the anatomical structures based off the light patterns that I see. Drawing a line to set up the edge between the light side and the shadow side will help guide us as we shade later on. And if we're drawing from a reference photo to guide us as we draw, finding the shadow's edge and the anatomical structures is all about observation. We are observing the light and dark patterns, finding the edges within that pattern, and then drawing them. 
If we're drawing from the imagination, it's just a matter of deciding where the anatomical structures come together and imagining how the light pattern is impacted by the particular combination of those forms. I like working from the bigger light patterns and structures down to the smaller ones. Now I'm ready to draw the contours or the lines that refine the shapes making the arm look more like a real arm. This step should be easy now because I've done all these other steps to set up where those lines should go. That is because as I draw these lines, I no longer really need to worry about sizing or positioning any of these lines to make sure the arm is drawn correctly. I've done all that work. I get to focus on just one thing and that's refining the contours at this point. That is to say, I can now focus on just refining the shapes and further defining the forms through rounding my edges and working on creating fluid contours without really having to worry about any of the underlying structure at this point. Now you may have noticed that I'm starting to darken my lines now. Now this is one way I can suggest the finished drawing by darkening the final lines of my drawing. Now this isn't the only way to do this. Another way to do this is I could erase all my structure and mapping lines as I draw in my final contour lines. Or I could just draw all these lines really lightly and then hide them with the shading when I shade later on. These are just stylistic choices. You'll want to decide on how you like to do it. For this particular drawing, I'm not going to do too much shading, so I'm just going to darken the lines a little bit. On a quick side note, I don't really like to erase much. Erasing can cause damage to paper, and this can cause problems later on when I'm doing some shading. If you do need to erase, erase lightly. Don't push really hard with the eraser, as it is pushing hard that often causes the damage to the paper. You'll also notice that I have another piece of paper under my hand as I draw. This prevents me from smearing my drawing as I move my hand across the paper. Without it, my hand will pick up the graphite from the drawing and smear it across the page every time I reposition my hand. All right, so I'm gonna go back and work on the hand some more now. By the way, sorry about the two fingers going outside the frame of the video here. I learned something about the differences between my preview screen on my camera and the camera sensor while making this video. I'm doing something a little different here. This time around, I'm working on both drawing the anatomical structures and shaping the contours at the same time. I could do it like I did when I drew the arm and separate the two into distinct steps. And if you're new to drawing, I would encourage you to do this. However, I thought I'd show you how we can combine the steps as well, as the steps used in this demo are just guides and we can use them in ways that work for us. We can skip those that we may not need, or we can combine them into methods that are more comfortable for us. In this case, I'm comfortable working out the structures and contours as I'm looking at the hand from a side view. The way the parts of the hands are coming together really does not feel that complex to me, and I don't think I need to work out any perspective concerns, so I'm just going to draw everything as one combined step. If the hand felt more difficult, I would definitely separate out those steps again. As I draw the fingers, I want to point out something about the anatomy. You'll notice that I'm drawing the fingers to appear more angular and flat on the top and a little bit more curvy and rounded on the bottom. Any part of the body that is shaped or formed by bones will look sharper or more angular than when compared to the parts of the body that are formed by the fleshy or meaty parts. So when we draw any part of the body where the skeleton is the defining area, we can draw straighter lines and boxier forms. Where that part of the body is defined by muscle, fat, or flesh, we can then draw more curved lines or rounded forms. This is true for the fingers, hand, and the rest of the arm in our drawing. In this drawing, the wrist and elbow are the good places to draw more boxier forms, and the muscles that we've mapped out of the upper arm are good places to draw more curved lines. It's at this stage where things seem to slow down a bit. We may not draw as quickly as we like, uh, and it may not look like we're making much progress, but we really are. Right now we're polishing up the drawing and refining the details. We're now tweaking the drawing to fit our stylistic needs. And it's because we're making these smaller adjustments, it may feel like we're making very little progress. However, this is a very important stage of the process. This is because with each tweak we do to our drawing, we're moving away from a general or generic arm drawing to something that is unique to us. How we refine or tweak the drawing really depends on our goals. If, for example, we want to do something very realistic, we might be working with a reference image. 
and we'll make adjustments to the shapes and forms within our drawing to match the referenced as best we can. Now for stylizing the drawing in any other way, this is when we might begin to adjust the drawing to fit the style that we are imagining. For example, I might want the arm to look a little bit more cartoonish, and I could stylize the drawing with more exaggerated rounded, curved, or bubbly lines. Of course we could stylize the drawing at any point during the drawing process. For example, we could stretch the proportions and reshape the forms earlier on. But here we might just want to play with the line work or some of the smaller visual cues to get the look that we want. Just like when we're working on the anatomical structures, we can rely on observation of what we see, our imagination, or a combination of both to complete the drawing. For my drawing, I'm working on highlighting or emphasizing the shapes created by the forms of the arm to help me rework this as a digital illustration later on. All right, now we can do some shading. I'm going to just shade the shadow side of the arm, but leave the light side alone, letting the paper show through. This is really just a stylistic choice that I'm making. If I wanted to, I could draw in line only, or I could render this to show the arm through values and shading completely, hiding all my lines. Because I plan to finish this drawing in a digital media, I really don't need to do any shading, but I thought I'd demonstrate a little just to give you something to work on. So I'm going to shade the shadow side all the same value. This just helps keep the drawing or the shading unified. If I were to continue shading all the parts of the arm, there will be changes in how light or dark the shadow of the arm is, but having a consistent base of shading will make it easier to keep each area of the shadow balanced with the other areas as I complete it. I don't want to go too dark at this point, as I want to leave room to darken certain parts of the shadow. These will be the core shadow and the occlusion shadow created by the armpit. By drawing these in later, it'll be easier to show the bounce or reflected light in the shadow with very little effort. I'm shading from the top finger down to the shoulder, simply to avoid smearing or smudging the graphite on the paper as I shade. There we go, the arm drawing is completed. All right, as a quick review, in this video we've walked through some steps to draw an arm. We used basic shapes and forms to set up the drawing. We've mapped some guides to set up the anatomical structures. We've mapped the shadow. We drew the contours to illustrate the arm based off of the structural mapping that we did. And we did some simple shading. Now it's your turn. You can approach this in several different ways. You can draw the arm from imagination, or you can find a photo of an arm and draw that arm, or you could have a friend sit with you and you can draw their arm. Now if you're brand new to drawing the figure, I'd encourage you to find an image of an arm or have a friend sit for you. This is because if you have never drawn an arm before, observing it makes it easier to do. You'll begin to see the structures and the forms and get a better understanding of how they come together to form an arm. It's all the stuff we've seen, but never really paid that much attention to. Of course, the more you practice, the better you get at it. The more practice you have drawing the arm from observation, the more you'll remember about that arm, and then you'll get better at being able to draw it from imagination. And as always, have fun with it. Don't worry about the success of each individual drawing. You are learning. Let each drawing be a building block to the next drawing. With practice, you'll get your drawing skills where you want them to be.